The organized private sector of Nigeria, comprising of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and the Nigerian Employers Consultative Association, among others, have expressed its opposition to any attempts by the federal government and other tiers of government to introduce new taxes or levies. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National um, Budget, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, had said the ministry is closely studying the possibility of introducing new taxes, tariffs and levies as part of measures to shore up government revenue. Well, joining us to discuss this is financial analyst Richard Inoyo and managing partner Viral Business Consulting Limit, uh, Limited, Kem Joseph Palmer. Thank you very much, Mr. Palmer, for joining us. Thank you so much, man. All right. Nice to see you. Great. Um, so when it comes to taxation, um, we know that the, the different ways of taxing the system. I mean, just recently... Um, Lagos and River State governments were fighting the federal government on VATs. And here we are. The government is trying to shore up its revenue. And the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria uh, are saying that this might um, destroy the already crippling economy of the country and might lead to job losses. Can you put a picture to us for someone who's involved in business? Okay, I, I'll start by saying that I understand where the government is coming from. I mean, as we speak, Nigeria had lowest revenues. Out of 115 countries, Nigeria was not 115. And that means in terms of spending capacity, uh, Nigeria came second to the last 115. So I understand the pressure to improve revenues. In fact, the way it's going, if Nigeria doesn't do something drastic, by 2021, you will find out that total revenues to the states is certainly going to decline drastically. Mm. And of course, we know what the ripple effect will be. So, do we need more revenue? The answer is yes. The question is how? How should Nigeria show up its revenue? As a business person, I already understand the challenge, you know, uh, and I can tell you the truth. A tuba of yam um, at found gate prices, last time I checked, was about 70 to 150 Naira at around Nasrawa, Jokosta Axis. That's if Tuba or Yang will probably be at 500 Naira to 700 Naira in Port Harcourt or Lagos. What that means is, I mean, when you want to ask yourself, you will say, okay, so what happened? How did something that was just 70 Naira become 500 Naira? The answer is, there are so many hidden costs to every business in Nigeria. Hmm. Typical business, where I look for how to provide his own water, his own electricity, and maybe other opportunities that I mentioned uh, provided. So that tuba of yam became 500 naira because it went through uh, a, 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 a process where indirect taxation thereby to uh, what I call the corruption value chain. Um, again, you'll find out that apart from the um, the registered government uh, taxes and levies they, they have to pay. There's also the issue of uh, people who have put themselves as gatekeepers in the process, mm -hmm. middlemen. Mm -hmm. And then when the, the yam gets to us, you know, it comes out 500 naira. Now, the truth is, for almost every goods or service produced in Nigeria, there are direct and indirect costs. And I can tell you that every business functions along three lines. One, to improve effectiveness. So you produce, um, say you produce palm oil or vegetable oil. If you can meet your targets, you know, let's say I want to produce uh, 50 liters or 50 tons of vegetable oil daily for manufacturing companies to do that. I have become, if I can do that, I'm being effective. And if I can do that with an optimal utilization of resources, then I've been efficient. Hmm. If I can combine the gains from effectiveness and efficiency over time, then I, I can see how it's sustainable. So the question is this. When we talk about efficiency, we're talking about resource utilization. How do we make our businesses perform within the context of the economy? Well, talking, talking, about, about economy, talking about the context of the economy, let's go back to the basics. You, you, met, you made mention while you were trying to describe, describe the business environment in Nigeria, you talked yeah. about the average business person being a government to himself, 
could, you yes. know, getting your own light, paying for your own water, sometimes even Absolutely. grading the road to your business area. But does this not also point to a failure of governance at certain levels, which has led to the fact that we have these hidden costs? These problems that we're facing every single day, whether it is light. I mean, I know that businesses, I, I was listening to the radio the other day and certain parts of Lagos were complaining that um, they were going to have to, that um, the, I think the power holding company was going to take their light for about 18 hours. And this was the time that they needed the light the most to do their businesses and that they might also be on the losing end. So if the government has failed to, pro to produce or provide these things for these businesses to thrive, and then they're still trying to tighten the belts of these business owners to pay more taxes, does it really make sense? Uh, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, in another life, I was the head of a, a, an FFCG company who manufactured a number of things. And I can tell you that my greatest nightmare is not to have government light. We had, I mean, we had several transformers running. We had a 33 kVA transformer. We had other 11 kVA, our six 11 kVA transformers there. Not even getting government light. And perhaps not even getting gas because we run on gas to produce our power. And I've done the numbers, and for me, the cheapest source of light, uh, source of power from any manufacturing concern is the one we get from the utilities, from government. So when we can't even get it, you can um, imagine how much cost. If you are trying to run an average boiler in a manufacturing plant, and you come with your diesel fuel to run it, honestly, in under an hour or so, you burn up all that diesel. And you probably won't be able to transfer that cost to the consumer, because market forces and all that you know things come to bear when you are doing appropriate pricing of your products so if the the market says oh a, 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 a ton of vegetable oil is seven hundred thousand naira, and you are produced because of your input costs you know you were not fortunate like some other people to get nepa power and you had to burn diesel or you maybe at around that point your gas is not going to the right pressure so you don't use gas you find out that the additive cost might make it almost impossible for you to make a profit. Hmm. And people do make negative uh, 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 balances on these kind of issues. Hmm. So you know completely, I mean, we are, we are uh, talking to me, you're preaching to the choir here. I understand it and I know that except government does something drastic about some key things. The solution, uh, and, and really I'm, I must let you know that I underline the position of the organized private sector. Do I know that government is facing a difficult situation? Yes. Do I understand that if they don't do something urgent and drastic next year? Yes. And that could include issues like the uh, issue of PMS and we remove the revenue, do we remove the uh, subsidy or not? That's an asterisk. That could also mean cutting down the cost of doing business. Because if I mean, every business, I mean, look at it very impact how we, the only way, the simple, three most basic ways for business, and government is a business, to grow their uh, revenue is one. Mm -hmm. Increase your number of sales. You sell more items, you know, you get it out. Two, you increase your profit margins. And finally, if you're, if you're, not, if you're not increasing the number of sales, you're not increasing your profit margins, then what are you trying to do? You reduce your cost. Mm. So if government is not getting enough revenue, and of course it cannot do more in terms of sales, you know, for the crude oil and other sources of income, it cannot uh, um, increase the margins it gets for some of these things because they are subject to global competition and pricing. Yes. How about the last option? Reduce the cost of governance. So why don't we try that? That's that, that, and that's a sore it. point. Every time we talk about reduction of the cost of governance, it seems to be an issue. There's no political will to do that. That's exactly. The I, I, and then, and I'm wondering why continuously um, seem like a slave driver for businesses who are barely struggling to survive. I'd like to even quote um, someone um, from the um, MAN, which is the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, who said that yeah. doing this will mean that it would be counterproductive for businesses. It would, he said, according to him, he said it will further stifle the already burdened businesses, most of whom currently operate at less than 50% capacity utilization. Let's not forget that even normal jobs, even many companies, private companies, are now paying 
50% salaries, some are paying 85% salaries. So, and he went ahead to say um, it would further lead to an upsurge in unemployment um, and it, with its attendant socioeconomic consequences, knowing that uh, the more idle hands we have, the more devil's workshops will be opening across the country. And we already have a lot to deal with in terms of banditry and uh, Boko Haram. Absolutely. It is completely correct. Um, it, it, such an action has a metastasizing effect across. I mean, it's like a cancer. It's going to go around to every nook and cranny of Nigeria and put pressures on Nigerians. Let me tell you something. I understand why people man will be seriously worried. The truth of the matter is that when you see manufacturing concerns, the impression is that, oh my goodness, all this facility here and everything, they make tons and billions of naira. Do they make a lot of turnover? But what are the margins? Remember, I was talking to you about, you know, what are the margins? They are called fast-moving consumer goods because typically they want to move out quickly into the market. So the margins are not fantastic. If you put more pressure on the margins, you know, what's the incentive to do the business? And I expect that some business will just simply close down. Honestly. And when it closed down, what are we going to do? He's so right. What is going to happen to jobs? We're already back. In. And really, note that Nigeria is not operating in the best security climate. Mm -hmm. I was in Medigree some time back, wearing another hat. And I, I had a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce. And they were, uh, they, they felt you know, strangulated by so many things. In a place where there's insurgency, the private sector has borne the brunt of it, you know, because their business has been targeted by the insurgents and so many other things. There seems to be nothing to help them come out. Mm. And we do know that about 90% of businesses, the key driver for every economy is medium, micro, small and medium scale enterprises who should be able to galvanize the economy. So mm. when you come up with you know, uh, uh, policies that was tranquilate them and, and lead to job losses, then what are we saying? Are we saying we do not understand the challenges? The government un does understand the challenges. I mean, I know they know this. They don't live in another planet. You know, and, and, and the truth of the matter is that if government is interested in actually, and, and I agree, government should find new innovative ways to improve revenue. But you cannot ask uh, businesses who are already overburdened. If you can provide the right infrastructure, what have you done? You have created better margins for them. They don't need to buy diesel anymore. They don't need to, you know, get look for alternative power sources. And for every manufacturing business, the major problem is power. So uh, if you can do that and provide good infrastructure for a road, so the cost of uh, the fixed stuff they need to run their plants drops. Then you have created a new margin where you can now say, okay, I've created the enabling environment for you. So on the basis of that, I want to add a little level of tax. That would make sense. But when you see people already overburdened, honestly, I, I don't know where the idea is coming from, but I think it's not the best of ideas. Finally, let's talk about the fact that we are mostly a um, consumer um, you know, country than uh, a producing, uh, producing country, I beg your pardon. Um, in terms of our imports and our exports, we import more to eat um, than, what, than exporting to make money. Um, what do you as a business person think is the problem, aside from the fact that, you know, um, the, the enabling environment is not there for us. But then what happened to the big industries that we had, the reviving of these industries? I mean, take a look at the Ajakuta steel and, and several other um, big government facilities that have just literally been laying fallow. Um, there have been a lot of questions as to why we have just somewhat become comfortable with just um, producing oil and selling at a benchmark, which, uh, again, let's not kid ourselves. Oil will not be there forever. Countries are moving to green energy and, 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 and you know, gas. Uh, but we're still here talking about crude oil and depending solely on it. Whatever happened to other, you know, aspects of growing the country? I mean, agriculture is one side, uh, which we, we continuously pay lip service to. We have not really um, addressed the issue of agriculture. But then what about our manufacturers and, of course, the big industries that we used to have that are now somewhat moribund? Uh, thank you, uh, Marianne. 
Truth is, let me start by saying something a bit positive. Um, since 2015, for the very first time, Nigeria's economy is growing faster than the population growth rate. Population growth is about 22.5 to 2.7%. Um, but according to statistics in general, the economy in Q3 of uh, this year should be growing at 4.03%. So which means we're hoping that things will change. But you see, um, maybe if you don't fix certain things, then at best, we'll be having um, very untrammeled trammeled growth. We will grow, but the issues around it will stifle that growth. Tell me, what grows the economy? We talked about the issue of balance of trade. I mean, how much are we exporting and how much are we importing? How do we stop the millions of Nigerians from consuming foreign products? I mean, one of the things I, I, I've heard some people talk about, and it makes a lot of sense to me, is the, the concept of import substitution. You say, okay, um, we're buying all our tissue paper from, say, London. Why don't we create the capacity for people to produce it locally? We buy our uh, wine, uh, wines and spirits from so 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 place. Why don't we create the capacity to do that? You know, I strongly believe in a selective delinking from the global economy. And until Nigeria comes to that re realization, until we learn to tighten our belt and say, oh, we can do that, a lot of things that we do. And then not only do we cut down on the consumption, we ask ourselves, how do we produce? And the government provides incentives and guarantees that helps people produce. Hmm. If I know that the government, I mean, I mean, when you say this, people say, oh, they open the borders, they will bring, uh, you know, a good chunk of the vegetable oil consumed in the Nigeria country to the Republic. That's a known fact. But where does the rice come from? A good chunk of the rice come from on the borders too. Hmm. So the question becomes, how do we grow our economy with a lot of issues? How do we manage the borders better? You know? How do we reestablish trade routes and you know rather than channel things through them, rather than having informal borders, you know, stifle our progress? So finally, so finally, is it is it that we cannot, or is this that is it that we don't know the how to? This is this is where my confusion is. Is it that the government government yeah, cannot do it? all goes back to political will. I'm telling you that I and you we are definitely not smarter than government technocrats who see all these things. But again, it's always the political side to some of these angles. You know, if we say we'll stop importing so, 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 right, whatever, mm -hmm. there's a political uh, yeah, imperative for that. So can we have a government that will say, beyond the politics, Nigeria first. Hmm. Beyond my cronies and my, you know, political supporters, Nigeria first. Perhaps if we can get someone who will sit down and you know, you know, you can't you can't make any omelet without breaking some eggs. That's the honest truth. Okay. So um, if we can rejig our thoughts and you know get people in government and governance to 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 you know bite the bullet and do the right thing, perhaps there will be some glimmer of light at the end of the time. Well, okay, Joseph Palmer is the managing partner of Viral Business Consulting Limited. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank Apologies. You so much, uh, we could not get Richard Inoyo to join us. Thank you so much once again, okay. Thank you so much, Marianne. All right. Pleasure Thank you all for staying Thanks. with us. It's been Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. I'm Marianne Nicole, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.